Hey and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. In this video we're going to be creating the Firefly animation that you see in the example. So the first thing we can do is Shift A, add in a cylinder. And then we also want to Shift A and add in a UV sphere. These two objects are going to be used to create our container. So let's just drag this up out of the way. And then select both of them and then press S to scale so they both share the same scaling. Then if we select this one, S on the Z, just so it's a little taller. Okay, so we we'll select the cylinder, and then we're going to tab into edit mode. Make sure face mode is selected. Select this face and that one. Press X to delete. That should be good. Tab out of it. We're going to do the same for the sphere, but let's just move this um, cylinder out of the way. Tab into edit mode, and then we're going to change this to vertex select mode. Select this bottom one and control number pad plus a few times. So we can increase the selection, maybe one more time. And then press X and delete the faces. Tap out of edit mode, select them both again and hit Control J. So now they're both one object. Tap into edit mode. And if we press L while hovered over any one of these vertexes here, it will select them all. And we just want to drag this down with a little bit of a gap. So now we want to select these rings. Um, I'm going to press Alt and right click on here. And I'm going to press Shift, Alt and right click. Try that again. Shift Alt and right click on this ring here. And you can select them however you want. You don't have to use that. You can use B to border select if you want. If we hit spacebar and then type bridge, this when we select uh, bridge edge loops, it just adds a few faces for us, saves us a job. I'm just going to select this ring here and just drag it down a bit so it's a bit evenly spaced. Okay, so now we've got that, I'm just going to scale it down on the Z a bit so it's a bit flatter and also scale it down a little bit. Drag this up so it's sitting on the grid floor. Shift A, I'm going to add in a cube, and this is going to be for the floor. I'm not going to do any modeling right now on the floor, I'm just going to use this as a rough guide to see how it looks. So maybe scale it down a bit more, something like that. Drag it down, make sure it's sitting, make sure the cylinder is sitting right on top of the plane. So go to uh, Modifiers tab, and we're going to add a subdivision surface. Also press T, and we can smooth this out as well, see how it looks. We also want to give it a bit of thickness, so add another modifier, we want a solidify modifier. And if we hide this uh, floor, just so we can see how it looks. Okay, so we want to increase the thickness, so select the cylinder again, and we can increase this thickness. Again, how much thickness you put on it is entirely up to you. I'm just going to say 0 0.04 should be good. It might look a little bit weird at first, but we do need it to be this way around. So we hit Control R, and we can add in a loop cut and just drag this down. And the lower you drag this uh, edge loop down, the sharper this edge here will be. So if you want it rounded off, this is a good spot to have it. If you want it a bit sharper, then just drag it down a bit more. Okay, so make sure you save it as well. And we don't need to worry about this modifier. We can increase this to two just to see how it looks. It's not looking too bad. Bring that back by pressing Alt H. Okay, so Shift A and we can add in our Firefly. It's just going to be an icosphere. Since it's going to be pretty small and have blur and glow, so you won't need to worry about the how many faces it has. Oh yeah, I should mention as well, every time you scale something, make sure you press Control A and scale. So scale it down, then press Control A, and then hit scale. Just to keep things everything nice and tidy. We can also smooth shade this icosphere. And let's give it a material. The material, I'll just name this Firefly, why not? And it's going to be very basic, it's just going to be an emission shader. I'm going to change this. Now the colour, you can put whatever colour you want. You can make it green glowworm or Firefly, whatever you want. It doesn't have to be orange. I'm just going to make this an orangey colour. I'm going to increase the strength to 2. That's quite bright. Let's just drag this down to see how it looks inside the container. We also want to select the container and then add a new material. Again, this is very basic. It's going to be a glass shader. We just want to select the color and just drag it all the way up. This white value, so it's 100% white. We also want to add a HDR image. Then select this box here. Environment texture. So this is just going to be for the lighting and the reflections. We're not going to worry about the background, so select it to render panel and choose transparent. 
So now when we render it, we should have a transparent background and give that a quick render, see how it looks. Okay, so it needs a little bit of work. Let's start by positioning the camera, like so. I'm gonna press R, X to rotate on the X value. Something like this. Re-render that. Just to see how this looking. So we can see the background through the glass, um, which we don't want. But don't worry about that, since when we add a background to the scene, um, it won't show up. So we just want to see how this looks. So that might be a bit big, the firefly in that container. I might want to scale it down a bit as well. So doing a test render like this gives you an idea how your scene is going to look. So I want this to be a gloomy scene. So I want maybe a brick wall at the back, maybe a wooden table. Also select, select this U icosphere and go to this tab here. And we want to make sure we activate the material index. And this will help um, with the glow later on when we do some compositing. We also want to go to the material tab, go down to settings. And we want to ch um, choose a pass index of 1, 2, 3, whatever you want. Let's move this out of the way so the camera doesn't render it. We want to shift A and add in um, a plane. This is going to be for the particle system. Let's drag this up. Drag this up a little. But let's bring back the cylinder and then just scale this down because we don't want this to be outside the cylinder. We want it to be inside. Hide that again. So that should be a good size. Um, maybe a little bit smaller, but I'll leave that for now. So we want to just add a particle system. So go over to the particle tab, add a new particle system. You can rename this if you want, if you're going to use more than one. We want it to, we want to change this emission, the number down to say 50, maybe even less than that. I'm just going to say 50 for now. Start frame can be one. The end frame needs to be one as well. So they all appear at the same time. Jump to the first frame, we'll show you what it does. <laughs> So obviously it needs a little bit of work. So the lifetime as well, if you've got a 250 frame animation, make sure it's 250 for the lifetime. Anything less, just set it to whatever you need. We'll come back in a minute and change these the physics type, but for now I'm just going to choose the object that it's going to render. And the object is going to be the icosphere, unless you've renamed it. I think I renamed it fly. We also want to uncheck emitter, I'll probably do that later on, but if you want to uncheck that it won't render the, the plane. We also want to decrease the size or increase it depending on how big or small you want these. I want to see from the camera view, maybe they're a little bit too big. We can come back later on and change them, that's not no problem. Now for physics we want to choose Boyd's, and Boyd's is a very good um, physics mechanism <laughs> I don't know what you call it but it's very very good and useful what we want to worry is the boy brain so right now they've got it's got two functions it's going to separate and then flock so it's going to separate from each other and then they're going to try and flock together and you can add um, more options or more functions for them to do you can also play with these values up here let's just reduce this down we only want 10 maybe jump to the first frame looks a lot better with only a few of them I think also make sure you apply the scale for that plane. Okay, so right now they're they're quite um, active. <laughs> they're quite they're moving around a lot. I want them to be quite closer together and not move as much. So we can do that in a minute. So come down to the Boyd's brain. Let's just change the scale of it a little bit first. So now under the boy's brain, we have this rule fuzziness, which basically means how much it's going to stick to the rule of these separate and flock values. So we jump to the first frame, set this all the way down. We can see it spreads out quite a lot. And then if we change this to say one, it'll hardly move whatsoever. So it still moves and they still do the functions, but it's not as much. So you want to play around with it and find something that you like. I'm going to leave this at one maybe. You also want to play through and also bring back your cylinder because you can you see some of them might um, fly through the cylinder. So we need a way to control them, um, a way to make them move. So it's very easy to do. If we press this plus button here, we, get, um, we can select goal. We can now, after they separate and flock, they'll then try and go to a goal. Add in any kind of object you want. I'm adding in an empty. 
and then what we need to do is set this well make sure you select the plane and then the goal we want to select the object as the um, empty so now after they've flocked well they're going to separate first and then flock together and then try and go to the goal we still have one here that <laughs> seems to try and escape and again play around with the rule fuzziness if you you know you want them to move a, bit, a little bit more a little bit further away play around with these values till you get something you're happy with you can also animate the empty so if say for example one still manages to escape you can move the empty around before it gets to that spot so if you wanted to you just press I add a location for the keyframe move it around add another one but I think that's going to be fine for me also play through it make sure you're happy with it and when you are happy with it then you can bake it that's very simple uh, most of the work's done in the compositing now so I'm going to go ahead and add in the rest of the scene so I'm modeling maybe the stand and the background a bit of a floor so I'll do this in time lapse so you don't have to wait around um, if you're interested in how I did any of the effects just let me know in the comments and I'll um, yeah I'll probably do a tutorial on how to do that effect so yeah you can jump ahead now to part two or you can watch this the rest of this video and see how I finished on the scene. So either way, thanks for watching and hopefully see you in part two. My dear I'll give you 60 seconds to disappear And if you don't get out of here Who knows I've been trying to find out if an angel bends or breaks Oh, shadows like a stone I want to destroy something beautiful For you Canadian whiskey and spite Again Destruction and creation are the same thing after all